My name is Colleen Moore and I work for the Illinois Institute for Addiction Recovery and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, compulsive gambling or problem gambling today. Um, what we found um, in the most recent DSM-5 changes is that problem and compulsive gambling has now moved to the, the uh, chemical addiction and behavioral addiction uh, section uh, within the DSM-5, which is very exciting uh, for us as a treatment provider. Um, something to be aware of as uh, an, an in individual in the field is that if you're not screening for compulsive or problem gambling, that's something that you need to be doing in your practice. So there's a lot of comparisons between alcohol addiction and, and drug dependency. Um, we see it as a disease because if you look at the definition of a disease, disease is something that's a chronic, um, it's progressive, it is a primary diagnosis, and how it's defined as a primary diagnosis is that if uh, someone, um, a primary diagnosis is really seen as something that if it impacts your life um, and you're not able to function as a result of what you're um, experiencing or engaging in. If you're someone that's not screening uh, for compulsive gambling, there are two screens that are very easy to utilize. The South Oaks Gambling Screen or a two question and, uh, question and answer. And what it is is have you ever lied to anybody about the extent of your gambling and have you ever bet more than you intended to gamble? very quick and easy screening tools um, that you can utilize within your practice. Part of the recovery process, especially through Gamblers Anonymous, they talk about the repayment plan um, and trying to develop a, a healthier relationship with money. And so through that process, we do ask for folks to, to uh, sign their finances over to a loved one or someone to whom they trust, and they do not have any access uh, to money. They're given a budget, they're, they're given some money to be able to pay for gas or buy groceries, and then the accountability partner, they will be providing receipts to that accountability partner for the amount of money that they've spent. And that's just, again, a way to, to put roadblocks um, in front of them. So if they have a craving, to gamble, it's not as easy. The accessibility to money is not there. Um, and then again, it helps them see the value of money as they continue working through the 12 steps of Gamblers Anonymous. So we incorporate Gamblers Anonymous within our program. There is Gaminon as well for a loved one supporting um, a person in, uh, in their recovery. And so um, we want the family members to work through their own recovery and so we get them connected with Gaminon as well. So our program is based off the 12-step uh, philosophy for all of our addictions and even though we integrate uh, the clients um, with different addictions, we find that it's been very successful that you know having a separate track is not um, something that we see it works for our clients that come into into our program that they the power of the group is just amazing. So again, my name is Colleen Moore and I work in the admissions department at the Illinois Institute for Addiction Recovery. So if you have any questions or concerns um, about someone suffering from addiction or questions about how to treat um, an individual that has addiction, especially related to compulsive gambling, feel free to give me a call or visit our website. We'd be more than happy to help you in any way that we can.